Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another episode of Brew and Build. Today we are in our house. I have completed the interior. I think it looks pretty decent. Well, completed is not exactly the right words. I have done the floor and moved all the stuff in because originally we were out here and I didn't want that. <clears throat> and so first off, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for all the great response that you guys had on the last video. I mean, it's been it's been insane. Um, last video got so much feedback within like the first day that I like all I can say is thank you. It was awesome. It was great to like you guys had so many ideas and so many thoughts um, and you guys seem to really like the lore and I'm really happy about that because I really like the lore and it was really fun to do. Um, <clears throat> so getting into today, we're going to go through some of your guys' ideas, uh, most if not all. Um, the ideas I saw, and uh, yeah, um, and if we don't get through them all, that's okay. They'll come up eventually um, as time goes on. So firstly, we're going to look at this idea. This comes from FWIP. So FWIP had this idea that there would be a like a survivor's area, and that they, they've they learned that the Endermen, if you look at them in the eyes, they that's when they get triggered to attack. If you don't look at them, they don't like get triggered or anything. And so um, given that Endermen are only around during the nighttime, this is the dangerous time for them, most dangerous time for them to um, be like in here. Like if they're in here, Endermen are out there and they can still see through it to outside, then they can look at the Endermen and the Endermen can get mad and come in here and uh, mess things up. And so what they do is they barricade the windows. Um, these top ones probably don't matter as much, um, but they are also barricaded as well. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool idea. He also mentioned that there'd be like a survivor's area. Um, and I thought that could be a really cool idea to have in our keep. I thought that would be a really fun way to do it. Also been playing around with using purple glass instead um, and I'm keeping my back to the town on purpose because we have done some stuff. <coughs> and so I think I like the purple glass um, quite a bit for this area. I think it changes up the blue glass and it looks looks pretty decent. Um, but yeah, survivor's area, I think the keep could be like that surviving uh, area, bastion of hope sort of thing that um, maybe King Ray and the Fourth, the uh, son of the crazy dude that uh, brought all these Endermen <laughs> to this area, um, maybe he leads this whole surviving town aspect and he has this survival area up here. Um, I thought that could be a really interesting thing that we could do. So thank you, Flip, for that idea. And going off of that, um, do we have a bucket of water? Do we have a bucket? Um, Grumpy Owl had an idea. Oh, we have 15 buckets. That is absurd. Why do we have so many buckets? Uh, do we have any? Um, no. No. Maybe we'll do this. This is fine. Um, now we need some agua. Grumpy Owl had an idea. Um, there's some agua up here. Uh, Grumpy Owl had an idea. If you guys heard that throat sound, I am so sorry. <laughs> As you can see, I have built some stuff. We'll take a look at it in a second. Um, he had an idea that maybe also going off of the fact that they they know that if they stare them in the eyes, they uh, get they like get triggered and attack. Maybe they've also learned over time that they don't like water. And so he had an idea that maybe we could try and use that as a sort of defense. And something I was thinking, this may not look amazing, but I thought it could be in, oh, we were in the cobwebs. I was like, what's happening? Um, there, like that. And then this goes there. Um, so what I thought could be interesting is if we had this concept that happens and that they have like this entrance area that is a water water protected sort of thing that oh you can actually run across that that's weird huh bizarre um but maybe they have that idea actually i kind of want to try it to where we have the like this so then it flips up and kind of also blocks the area i thought that could be interesting um, oh, nighttime already. But my idea is that maybe they have this 
uh, oh, and that <laughs> that turned to uh, <clears throat> stuff. That's okay. The idea he had, I thought was really cool, um, was using water somehow. And I, so I thought, you know, it'd be cool to have like these little doorway moats because this is like the point of entrance that is dangerous for them. And so if they have these little moats uh, just in front of the doorways, it's just one extra layer of protection that they could have. And so they can just flip this up at night, protect themselves. And then during the day, they have an easy way to uh, be, they can just flip it down and go about their business. Um, so I thought that was a cool idea. So thank you, Grumpy, for that. So now let's explore this area over here. Um, so I have built three houses currently, and uh, they are all, except for one, this guy back here, they're all texture variated except for that one. Um, and I like it. I like how they're turning out. They are a little derpy and a little weird style, but I honestly don't mind it. Um, they <clears throat> are fun. I like the texture variation. I think it looks good. This one is a bigger house, and it, uh, it it's okay. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it. Uh, looks like we don't have anything, so we'll just uh, <clears throat> make it. And boom. Okay. There we go. That was driving me a little insane. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. I've lit all of them up. Still got to get the windows and stuff in, but I thought this was an interesting house. Um, and if anything, um, just trying to make interesting houses. Uh, also, we're out of rockets, so can't fly around. Um, also, did you know I named my, uh, wings the Lord of the Wings? Don't know if I ever told you that. Like, I named a few, th I've named a few things. Also, we got mending finally on the wings. Uh, finally went around and got mending. Um, but yeah, so we've made these houses. I think they're very nice are adding to the area. We will do the interiors of all these since there's not that many. Um, but yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, and I think we are going to go back to our old oak door, oak door texture. Um, nothing against germsies. I just don't think it fits our area. Like this is too, uh, posh. I don't know if that's the right term I'm looking for. We'll keep the birch door. I like the birch door, but the this is too upscale, I think, for what I want out of our oak door. And so I and I personally like our oak door. So it'll be fine. I will update the uh, download in the description. And I know there are a few issues with some of the textures. I've put a warning in the description telling you about that. Um, and so if you're experiencing that, I am sorry. I just don't really know exactly how to address it. I'm still working it out, um, but it's okay. Okay, so I have um, one or a couple other ideas that you guys had that I wanted to mention that I thought were really cool. Uh, we're not going to be doing any more house building today just because um, we will build some of these on camera. Just decided to build them up. They're not hard, as you can see. Um, but we'll do some of it, um, do a couple of them on camera, maybe next episode. Um, but what some ideas that you had as well, on top of everything else I've said, is uh, one of you, uh, I believe, you I don't know how to pronounce it, Laliet? I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but Laliet is uh, moderately new to our little, air, our little family, and <clears throat> they were both curious about the origins of the name Sarthal, and then also curious about the one god that I had mentioned. Um, and so the name Sarthal, I think I subconsciously thought of it, and because it's a it's a Nordic ruin in Skyrim, and I think I subconsciously just like picked that name because I thought it was a cool name for a town. Um, but you know, I mean, I changed the A from being. There's, I think in Skyrim, it's S-A-A-R-T-H-A-L, and ours is S-A-R-T-H-A-A-L. So obviously different, pronounced exactly the same, um, but yes. So I stole it from Skyrim, essentially. Um, <clears throat> and so one of you, uh, John Yablonski, I think, had the idea that maybe we could have some little... Uh, Easter eggs in our world that are just like tie-ins to our what we're inspired by. Um, I thought that would be cool. So for the like this area, he uh, mentioned we could have like a stick named uh, the Wabajack, and I thought that was just a fun thing we could do um, around the area. Gypsy Camp would have Fable Two inspired things, um, so I thought that would be a fun thing that we could do. 
And lastly, um, they okay. Well, I guess going going back to Lolliet, um, they had another. They had an idea on top of wondering about the god um, and the name of, name of the town. Um, so the god, I mainly just derive from my own belief as a Christian, um, just having one god. Uh, I think the god in this world, uh, we kind of went back and forth, Lolly and I, in the comment section, and we. Uh, I pulled a name, um, Os, O-S-S, I don't, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, it's Old Germanic for God, and I thought that would be a, uh, a good name for the God that we have in this world. I don't really know much of anything about the lore of this God and why they worship him, uh, what the worship's about, all that stuff, I don't really have that idea yet solidified, but I think we can solidify the name and be Os, O S S, and the O has a little thing over it. Um, but yeah, so that's that idea. Um, and then finally, Lolly also ha- thought it would be cool to incorporate the whole foggy glass idea, um, where if you layer up glass, um, so if you have glass layered, like glass block, glass block, and an air po- air pocket in between, um, the glass like has this. Uh, fade effect and it's like a foggy effect um and i thought that would be a cool idea that we could have uh have little fissures of these glass layers like emanating out from the uh temple here because this is like the source of void exposure which that is the term i'm going to be using i think that is going to be like the main premise of how the void is affecting this town like the stones are turning purple and blue um and they the ground is starting to become this like <clears throat> fusion between void and dirt and so we'll have these fissures that you can still walk on top of but they are like maybe black glass with concrete down at the bottom so it looks like just a dark void that goes down, but it's still solid. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of a interesting idea. Um, so, uh, but I thought it could be cool to have it like emanating from the uh, this area here, um, and maybe permeating some of the buildings and making some things translucent and stuff. Just like a fusion between void and this world. Um, so, thought that was a cool idea. Uh, anybody else that I missed, I am sorry. I think I responded to everybody. So um, I have a list here, and I think I've gone through everything. Um, but yes, I thought that would be a fun. I that was a fun thing to do is just run through everything that you guys had, um, and I thought it was really cool. Um, one other thing. Uh, just real quickly that I remembered is the whole uh, that water concept um, in front of the doorways we could say that um, water is like the reason being that water is a good defense against them is that Endermen when they teleport they aren't actually like straight up teleporting like going from this block to this block instantaneously that they actually travel along the along the ground but they like dematerialize and rematerialize here, but they have to have a connection point to the ground. And so having that block of water is a means of blocking their path. And so it actually acts as a wall. That's kind of my thought process that I know in uh, in Minecraft, actually, they can tell they could teleport like from down there to over there. But in our lore concept, I think it's a good thing to say that they, um, that one of their, to explain their teleportation, that when this is flipped up, they can't get from here to there because of this water. It blocks their path. Now, obviously, they could, you know, go from here and then go through. But, you know, would just ignore that because we could have moats all the way around, but I don't think that's very uh, good looking. Um, so I thought that was an, a, a good idea um, as well, is to have um, an explanation of teleportation and stuff of Enderman um, and how that water system could work. Man, sun's, sun's setting. I must have been talking for a long time. Um, let me gather up some materials. I have been doing a little bit of work uh, over here somewhere. Yeah, right here. So I've been uh, laying out the foundation 
of what our crop field is going to look like because this is a farming town um, and the soil is very fertile as we know from the law um, and so we are going to be doing that today um, but let me get materials gathered I need to go get more cobblestone um, I need to actually grab my other pickaxe because I'm so used to using a, a, a silk touch um, so let me get some materials gathered and I'll be back with you um, and we can tackle that all right guys so i have laid something out that i don't like <laughs> um i was just playing with an idea and i now know more about what um, i think we should do um what i was laying out is kind of how big it's figuring out how big i wanted to make uh each section of a crop field because we're going to have different crop fields that um will be uh, accessible here and um I just kind of went with the land and kind of just went that way, and uh, that's not a good idea. doesn't really look that good. So a fix for it that I think we're going to do is we're going to have continue this up a little bit more and make it more of a, a deeper circle shape, but then it's going to come up and around and come around to here. And so it's going to be a much fuller shaped. Uh, it's still going to be that almost crescent shape, but it's going to be less uh, thin. It's not going to be near as thin. Um, and so I think that is going to be a good shape to do. Now we need to figure out also how um, big the other ones are going to be. And honestly, all of these water pockets I think we'll cover up. And what we'll do, I think that'll be good, is to have this entire area right here be crops i think this whole section can be crops with a wall that expands around it and so it's a very um just one real big uh field of crops and then maybe what we could do is even have a couple houses dispersed around throughout here um and have some crop fields here maybe like that just so that this entire little mountainside is wrapped in crops i think that might be an interesting thing because we have a good amount of space around here it's not very big around here maybe the crops don't go over here um, but this is going to be the primary area for this crop section um, and so i was just figuring out what shape i like i don't like that shape um, so it's going to be back to the drawing board for that um, and yeah so let me get to laying out some crop uh, wall areas and uh, be back with you all right i am tearing out the last portion of the old wall and what i think we can do actually is lead this up just a little bit along this way tear you and you out and then we can take a look at what this looks like oh the path is right there oh uh, maybe this will come up near and be more like this and not there. And then it'll come up here. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be here and then here, there, there, there. And then keeping it along like this and then it should connect up right there very good and so we can knock this out very good okay so we're going to connect this up real quickity quick and then take a look at it um from up yonder and uh hopefully it looks better the other shape i just wasn't really feeling it was kind of this odd um odd like crescent-y shape and it was very strange and what uh, <laughs> not a very good shape in my opinion um and it, it didn't feel that good putting it down but i needed a kind of a shape to go off of to know exactly how uh much different we needed to go and i'm just kind of making a weird wall here okay good enough Man, I have been having... I don't like... Didn't you used to, like, hold control or something to fly? Like, you jump and hit control? I don't like the space bar. I, I like having to do the space bar. If they didn't change it, maybe I just don't fly enough. But 
it's just weird. I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of what this feels like. All right. Yeah, that's better. That is a, a nicer, larger shape. I think that is good. And it'll feel better once we have another section showing exactly where the path is going to be. Um, so yeah, let me sleep and I'll lay out that other one and then we'll get into some uh, laying out the crops and stuff because I think that will be quite fun to do. And by fun, I mean tedious and boring, but you know how it goes. All right, guys, so some time has passed and there has been some stuff done. So we still have the original one that we just did, um, and I think it looks good, <clears throat> but I've added two more. I've added this one and this middle section. And now what I'm thinking is that this will be primarily, actually will be like one giant wheat field. And then this, I am not particularly sure. Should, um, I was thinking we could make it uh, wheat as well and then have this be variety crops. Um, that might be what we do. But if we decide to do anything over here or somewhere else, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I do not honestly know. Um, so this is going to be wheat for sure. Um, and then this, maybe potatoes and carrots. We could like section it off. How big it does this feel? So this is, I also did a lot of terraforming and flattened this area out quite a bit uh, just because it makes more sense, I feel. And this is, this middle portion is modern, like pretty big. Like a, it's a pretty big section. Let's get this is a kind of a waste of a rocket, especially if we land somewhere we don't want to be. Um, it's pretty decent size. So what we could do is like split it down the middle because I have this these paths that I'm going to have like that go in between. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I'm not sure, but regardless, I'll figure that out. Um, we're going to take another quick cut here anyways, because one, I need to figure out this as well. I need to kind of like smooth this out. Um, that's basically what I've been doing is smoothing out the land to make it a little bit more uh, make sense for crops. Um, and then look at that tree. Just, I've never seen one that goes doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. That's interesting. Um, so I need to smooth this out. So I think what we're going to do, actually, I think I'm going to go with my original idea and make this middle section a pumpkin patch. And maybe we can make it all a pumpkin patch, or we may split it up. We may make half of it a pumpkin patch and half of it something else maybe we'll do that i don't know but i need to sleep so that mobs don't spawn and try and kill me um but one thing i also need to do real quickity quick is make me a diamond hoe and uh so i will go ahead and oh bed's over here i will go ahead make me a diamond hoe and then uh, we'll get started um laying down some crops don't think we're going to get all the crops in today, um, but I can at least tell you what I think is going to go where. So without further ado, I may do this in a form of a time lapse. I don't know. So whatever comes next, I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, so we are done with, uh, well, laying it out. We're not done planting. Still have quite a bit of planting to do, but 
overall, I am really happy with how it's turned out thus far. Um, I just want to be able to get this video out to you on time. Um, so I'm going to show you what we've got so far and the rest I can do off camera. So we have this. So here's the town, obviously. And now we've got a big path here. So this is going to come up and come down and connect through here. And I thought that was a good area to lead off to the desert area. And then there's this path here, which lead is probably going to be like a, a smaller. It's not smaller. It's like the same size, but it connects up and comes down this main area. Um, and so it's got these two main paths and we've got a big uh, field here and that's going to be wheat. Um, I ran out of seeds, so we're just going to wait until the wheat grows. Um, and then we can continue on going with our wheatiness. Uh, this is going to be all wheat as well. Um, and I think this half right here is going to be um, a pumpkin patch. And I think this pa half is going to be um, potatoes. I don't think we're going to grow carrots here. Um, we may throw carrots in around the house area, like some portions of this may be carrots, or maybe this top section is all wheat, and then this middle portion right here is carrots, and then down here maybe is beetroot or something like that. I am not really that sure. <laughs> um, but... I really like what this is uh, like. I like what it's turned out. I think it's going to really make this town feel nice. And this looks very, very flat, but it's actually pretty neat that this is actually like a hill all the way down. And we'll fly, fly down there in just a sec. Um, but while we're up here, I want to point out that right there is going to be two houses. So we've got a house here in the middle of the wheat field that I thought was a neat little addition because we have this pathway that kind of goes through the entire middle area. And so we're going to have a house somewhere in this area um, and then maybe another house. Eh, no, we'll probably just leave it for one house there. Uh, and I thought maybe we could put a um, sort of a, a windmill or something right here potentially because this is the highest portion and so it would receive the the strongest winds so that's kind of my um idea uh we could always bring the town around over here and have the windmill right there and so that is a very good candidate there um so uh that i'm gonna leave a poll up at the top that i would like to know where do you think the windmill should go over here on this top hill uh, the uh, we'll call it the um, uh, the poppy hill or over here in the wheat area um, the wheat farm so wheat farm windmill or poppy hill windmill uh, which do you think uh, should we expand the town over this way or just keep it all centralized in this area this area up to you guys um, so I really like what this has turned out and then oh and these houses there's gonna be two houses here connects up with the pathway right here um, and I think it's really good. This entire top section, I'm going to leave as grass. And I might honestly leave uh, some of this down here as well as grass. Um, just because it's kind of nice. It'd be like a little garden area for them. Um, but yeah, I am really happy. Let's go take a look-see at it from down below. And now you're starting to see exactly what it actually feels like. Oof. There we go. See, it's so cool. I really like it. Let's uh actually come in from how we would be coming in from the gypsy camp. So you'll swing around here. And then we're going to work out a pathway and probably terraform this. But you're going to see this. Uh, I probably am going to actually like lower this down to maybe that level and have, or actually, yeah, cause we could make it so it's like a valley sort of situation instead of this big hill. Um, so you're actually gonna be coming in from further down. You might dip down just a bit, um, but your first impression is gonna be lots of crops and lots of things happening. Um, and you can see maybe the town in the distance and then you can come up the pathway and there'll be crops and stuff all over all throughout here and then you got this little house and you just can keep on coming and i think this is quite nice uh ooh, 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 there we go 
Um, it's a little, I'm a little sad at the fact that it's like so close to the gypsy camp, but, um, that's okay. Um, you don't see it if the fog is on anyways. And so, yeah. And so this is what it's like coming in from over here. I personally think this is going to be like one of the main roads as well, just cause uh, that we take at least. Cause I just like what this looks like. I think this is, looks really, really nice. And I really like this path that goes in between this one. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Um, I'm going to do some uh, work, more work off camera, do a ton of grind to get these fields planted, um, and then I will be back with you next week for another episode, and maybe we'll build up this town and get all the houses built up um, so we have a nice, complete-looking uh, town before we jump into the temple. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you like the video, leave a like in real life. Um, and also, if you checked out the video on Wednesday or haven't seen it on Wednesday, we toured around Fix-It's uh, Realm of Vastin, and I would highly recommend uh, checking that out. Um, I'll put a link to his, to his um, channel down below. And uh, we, you should uh, definitely check him out because he's got such a great world, and it's super super cool. Uh, so I highly recommend him. Uh, so link in the description. Um, and yeah, if you uh, are new here and you haven't yet subscribed and you like what's happening and you uh, think this idea is cool and this build is cool, uh, feel free to subscribe. Join the little family we've got going here and I'll see you guys in the next episode.